So this is The Seduction with Morgan Fairchild. I have to say, although this is from 1982, it looks incredibly 70s. Check out the clothes and the hairstyles. Incredible that this came out the same year as Blade Runner and Fast Times, but let's move on. So this is successful and attractive news reporter Jamie Douglas, and she's swimming naked in her pool with her boyfriend Brandon watching. I like looking at you. I like being looked at. But he's not the only one watching. The phone rings, and the caller is neighbour Derek. She doesn't know Derek, but he's a photographer and he's not messing about. He's straight in with the calls and he's already got a shrine set up for her and everything. I'd like to briefly discuss Derek's hair. What is this hairstyle called? It's absolutely awful. Nobody can possibly look good with this. How does a hairdresser even do it? If anyone can answer any of these questions, please do so in the comments. Thanks. Jamie is at work now and some flowers have arrived and they're from Derek. Derek calls Jamie at work, but her assistant tells him she can't talk because she's on the air. Hey, come on, Jamie, you can tell me who's the new boyfriend. I don't know anyone named Derek. Derek is having dinner with his assistant, Julie, who pretty much tells him she's in love with him, despite his hair. But he's like, sorry, but I'm seeing someone else. There's someone I'm seeing. He means Jamie, who doesn't know he exists, but that's all about to change. Later that night, Derek calls her, telling her he really thinks they should meet. How did you get this number? It wasn't very hard. She's a bit creeped out, so goes over to her friend Robin's house. So he calls there as soon as she arrives. We don't know how he got the number, but Jamie tells him to leave her alone. Would you please just leave me alone? Next morning, Derek is staring at his Jamie wall. You can't keep your eyes off me, can you? At Jamie's work, her assistant is still asking questions about Derek. And Jamie said she thinks he's just a run-of-the-mill, over-obsessed fan with terrible hair. Some of the world's greatest romances started out just that way. Beg to differ. But it's far from run-of-the-mill. He's in her dressing room and he's brought some candy for her. He says he's sorry about the calls and his hair and says he'll no longer be bothering her. Beg to differ. If you're wondering how he got in, he gives the standard answer. How did you get in here? It wasn't hard. Yeah, I've heard the spiel. As he leaves, he sees Brandon arriving to see Jamie. And Brandon doesn't believe that Derek is going to stop bothering Jamie. As he walks her to her car, Derek hangs out of the window getting loads of photos. He's flattened Brandon tyres so he can follow Jamie home without Brandon interfering. Smart. When he knocks on her door, she assumes it's Brandon, so she opens it. So he just barges in, starts taking photos of her all around the house with his bad haircut. And it's seriously weird. What are you doing? Please. Derek, get out of my house. Girl. Now, I mean it. Stop it. Look, I am not kidding around. Would you get out of here? Get out of here. Leave me alone. Come on, wet your lips. Come on, let's Stop it. Stop it. Get Scream, out of here. Great. Damn you. Go get ahead. out of here. Get out Come of on, my house. Go. Luckily, Brandon comes home and batters him. <laughs> Next time, I won't stop. Thank you, Jamie. Oh dear. So as anyone would, they've gone to the police, and this is Captain Maxwell. Now in a lot of these types of films, it adds to the story that the police can't help because no actual crime has been committed, but that really doesn't work here. I mean, the guy's probably just an overheated fan of yours. We've just seen him barge into a house and assault her. Anyway, for plot purposes, the police can't do anything. There's not a hell of a lot I can do about it. I'm sorry. Now Derek is watching Jamie's friend Robin at some rehearsal thing. He comes into her dressing room and tells her he's in love with Jamie. Robin thinks Derek's hair is shit, so she tells him to fuck off. And Derek tells her she'll regret that. Next day, Robin and Jamie are at the mall and they're talking about Derek and his shit hair. They decide it's time for some retail therapy. Yes, we'd like something very expensive to get our minds off our troubles, if you know what I mean. So the jeweler offers this. This is what you want. <laughs> what? A 55-pound cigarette light. What? You know, That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Isn't it? Yes. So instead, he offers this musical jewellery box. Jamie says she likes it, but it's too expensive. When they go to look at some rubbish hats, Jamie hears the music from the jewellery box again and sees that Derek is over there buying it. She goes to a phone booth to check her messages, and there's one from Derek. Hi, Jamie, it's Derek. The pictures I took of you are just fantastic. I can't wait to show them to you. When she leaves the phone booth, he's there and he gives her the jewellery box. She smashes it and tells him to stay away from her. You stay away from me. I can't stand you. Brandon has gone to see a doctor to ask what's up with Derek, and she says it's likely he has erotomania. Okay. 
which would mean Derek was convinced that his feelings for Jamie are reciprocated, despite all evidence to the contrary. She warns him that he could be very dangerous. Don't cross him. Yeah, it's probably a bit late for that. Brandon is back speaking to Captain Maxwell, but he still won't do anything. His advice? Get a gun. You want me to kill him, don't you? I'm a cop, I can't say that. I just said get a gun. Robin is also telling Jamie to get a gun, but she'd rather not. Derek is now at Jamie's house putting a photo of her in the broken jewellery box and using a hairdryer. If I was Derek, I'd probably have gone for some scissors or even a razor. But anyway, Jamie comes home and Derek hides in the closet watching her in the bath. This is by far the most disturbing scene in the film. He is absolutely loving it. When she gets out of the bath to answer the phone, she sees evidence that Derek has been in the house. Then he opens the closet door and calls her name. Jamie. As she runs to the front door, Brandon is on his way. When he gets downstairs, he sees Derek has escaped through a window. Julie has come round to Derek's to ask him out, but Derek says he's engaged to be married. I don't think so. Back at Jamie's, Brandon has brought Jamie a gun and is showing her how to use it. Later at Jamie's work, Derek has managed to get himself in and pose as a member of the production team with terrible hair. Somehow, he manages to add a message to the teleprompter saying that if he can't have her, nobody can. When she realises what's happened, live on air, she pleads for help. It's him. Please. The police won't help. Nobody will help. He's going to kill me. That night, Brandon comes over to Jamie so they can relax in the hot tub. Captain Maxwell calls the house and Brandon answers. It seems Jamie's on-the-air plea has forced him into action. Captain Maxwell tells Brandon that they know Derek's full name and address and that they'll be sending someone to his house later that night. As Brandon and Jamie are at it in the hot tub, Derek jumps out of the bushes and stabs Brandon in the back. Although it seems to take Jamie quite a while to notice. And she doesn't even seem that bothered. Derek takes Brandon's body into the woods and buries it, so Jamie has time to get in the house and call the police. But they're busy, so she's on hold. Derek has gone home to eat an apple with the knife he killed Brandon with. Jamie calls him and tells him to come round because she needs him. Because he's deluded, he believes her, and off he goes. She waits for him in bed, and he's about to join her, but what? It's cushions, and Jamie's got the gun. She's absolutely crap with it, and every shot misses. <laughs> but at least it scared him off. She seems pretty chuffed with herself, but I don't think, all things considered, the evening has been much of a success. Derek is still alive, her boyfriend is dead, and Derek's hair is just awful. She calls Derek again and taunts him. He's so angry that he starts destroying his shrine. But there's a knock at the door, and it's his assistant, Julie. She's had a visit from the police, so she knows what he's been doing to Jamie. Ooh, Captain Maxwell is here too now, and he tells Derek to stop pestering Jamie. Important to remember at this point that neither Julie nor Captain Maxwell know that Derek has killed Brandon. Julie wants to help Derek, but he tells her to fuck off. Derek, I just want to help you. I don't want your help. From the camera in his room, Derek can see the gun unattended at Jamie's house, so he sees this opportunity and makes his way back to her house. But Julie is worried, so she follows him. Jamie, who knows there's a killer after her who's just killed her boyfriend and buried him in the woods, is casually pouring herself a drink and ignoring phone calls. I'm not at home. And Derek has got her. He's got the gun too, but he decided to throw it onto the floor and pin Jamie onto the bed. Then she spits in his face. And now it properly kicks off. <laughs> it ends with Derek mounting her on the bed with a knife to her throat. Jamie tries some reverse psychology and she's all, come on then Derek, get your pants off. And Derek's like, hey, what are you doing? Not like this. Sorry, Derek, has her consent killed the mood? Apparently so, because when she walks away, he takes her down again. But Julie is here and she's picked up the gun. <laughs> Julie is devastated now because she's realised she's going to have to look for another job. Derek is dead and the film ends there. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.